Welcome everybody and uh, thanks for joining me for episode 10 of my video series of songwriters notes on songwriting. Uh, to this point we've pretty much covered the uh, four basic elements of uh, a song, uh, namely harmony or chord progression, rhythm, lyrics, and melody. In the last two episodes on melody, I stress that a big part of the reason I went through these four elements in the order that I did uh, is that having established a foundation to your of, of your song's house, as I put it, with harmony and rhythm and then starting to work some uh, on some lyrical phrasing, uh, I've come to found in my own songwriting that I get the melody pretty much for free, meaning that it just kind of comes once it's constrained by the other three elements. So once you've built that, that house for the melody to live in, it sort of naturally finds a... Uh, a, a place to live, a, a way of being. Um, not that there can't be variations, of course there can. Um, uh, and a lot of it will depend on your own sensibilities and influences and everything. But building that house really helps to kind of uh, um, uh, constrain and contain what uh, the melody might want to do. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean that I lay down these uh, first three parts, one after the other, as finished pieces. I don't, absolutely. They all kind of jostle around with each other and uh, find a way to sort of fit in and nestle with each other. I sometimes will go back to the chord progression and make uh, usually a small change here and there, sometimes bigger, but usually small. Uh, if I've come up with a rhythm that I'm happy with in the beginning, it usually doesn't change a lot. Rhythms, I would say, are uh, pretty, uh, you know, again, if I have something that I like from the beginning, I, uh, you know, since I like it, I kind of stick with it, and that's a foundational piece of the whole thing. Uh, but sometimes I might um, change it. Um, more frequently, I might decide that the chorus, for example, wants to have a different rhythmic feel than the verse, okay? Uh, I'm almost always editing the lyrics uh, up until the end, whatever whatever the I mean by the end. Um, and by the way, it's worth mentioning, four times out of five, when I'm considering a word, changing a word here or there in the lyrics, after I have a pretty completed lyric, I find that my original instinct was, again, four out of five times the best choice. The lesson here is that while editing is super important, okay, and I don't want to um, understate the importance of editing. I mean, what you scribble down first is probably not really um, worth putting out there, um, I think in most cases. So while editing is really important, so is what comes out of the feeling that gave you the word or combination of words or rhythm or melody in the first place, as long as it comes from a place that was honest and open. Okay, what I, again, whatever that means, honest and open. So I know it's kind of vague and maybe not all that helpful, but... Uh, I guess I'm, you know, I think as you do more and more songwriting, you'll start to have a feel, more of a feel for what honest and open means for you. And if you are judging that you're being honest and open with your words um, or your music, uh, trust in that instinct, okay? And also have another mind that is constantly questioning whether this is really what you want to say, really the feeling that you want to have, uh, really the best way to um, for, a, for a lyric to get across what you want to say, the best word choice, the best phrase choice, and so on. Um, now, usually for me, there comes a point when I feel I have a pretty complete kind of working draft. Uh, and that always puts a smile on my face. Uh, most times the song's about 90% done at that point. 
Occasionally, I'll decide that I need another verse or a bridge, more about that shortly. Or I'll decide to work out some kind of intro or ending or outro. But there's a point at which I have something that's complete enough for me to be able to play what sounds like a song. And here's what happens at that point. And this is really important to my process, and I think probably to most songwriters' process. I play it in. And what do I mean by that? I play it over and over and over and over. Um, usually that's a multi-week process, um, a couple weeks, uh, minimum. Now, maybe I'm really intense in the first few days and then I kind of, you know, play some other songs or do some other things for a while and just kind of, uh, work that in here and there. But, um, it's a process to play in a song. I think I may have already mentioned the famous uh, story that Glenn Fry of the Eagles uh, told about when he lived above um, Jackson Brown in a house in Laurel Canyon while uh, Brown was writing Dr. My Eyes. Uh, Fry learned a really important uh, lesson about songwriting as he had to kind of endure listening to his friend play his song hundreds and hundreds of times from morning to night every day for weeks and weeks. Jackson Brown was playing the song into his bones. Okay? He was refining not only nuances in the melody, for example, but also learning how to vary dynamics, tempo, things like that. What worked and what didn't work. You just have to try things and experiment. Allow yourself in the song room to try different things. For me, the biggest changes during this phase are usually with the melody. And this is where it gets pretty well established. Okay. Another element that gets uh, that often gets tweaked during the playing in period is structure, uh, which is along with uh, bridges, which I'll talk about in a minute, is one of the two subjects of uh, today's talk. When I'm writing lyrics, even if the song ends up being, say, um, two verses, a chorus, two verses, a chorus bridge, chorus, and outro, you know, pretty standard kind of uh, structure. I don't write the lyrics in that order, okay? I don't even think about these various parts until later. Typically, I may have a chord progression uh, for uh, the verse and for the chorus, but when I'm writing words, I pretty much write a bunch of verses until I feel I've said what I have to say before I move on to the chorus lyrics. Not always, but typically. And your mileage may vary. You may have just a, a process, a uh, different process that works for you, and that's great. I'm just telling you what I, what works for me. Uh, and just as the melody largely comes out, kind of emerges from the other elements, being, uh, kind of having gotten at least somewhat solid, the chorus lyrics also come a lot easier for me once the verses are, are written, at least some of the verses. In other words, the substance of the verses actually informs what the substance of the chorus wants to be. Just as the feel of the harmony and rhythm and lyrics inform what the melody wants to be in my process. To me, this kind of nestling together process is the coolest, funnest, and most satisfying thing about songwriting, the interplay of these parts and how they push one another around, okay? Um, I really think of it as they kind of nestle into one another um, and, and find a way to fit together. And that's part of our job as songwriters, finding the best way for all of these elements to fit together into one whole. In a sense, I'm just the in initiator of the process and kind of a scribe. The song itself has a lot to say once you've kind of gotten the ball rolling. Okay, so now I've got enough verses and chorus lyrics to feel like it's rounding into shape, and I work with the sound of these lyrics as they combine with the harmony and rhythm to get a feel for the melody, as I talked about last time. Great. I'm at, 90, I'm at that 90% place now where I can start to play it in. Okay. 
one thing I notice at some point in this process, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, is whether the song wants a bridge or not. And notice I, I've been using kind of this sense of the song having a mind of its own, and in a, in a real sense it does, okay? As you get to a point where you have this kind of first draft, uh, sort of 90%, um, the song really does take on a life of its own. And our job, I think, as songwriters at that point is really to listen as much as we can to what the song itself wants. Um, the song, in a sense, is more in control than I am. There's no value judgment about having or not having a bridge. Bridges do things that might benefit the song or not. Uh, the, so let's take a minute uh, to talk about what the benefits might be for, uh, for just a minute. I've talked a number of times, especially as we discussed harmony, about how um, it can be really important to offer um, smaller or larger surprises to the listener's ear, not to allow the song to get stale, okay? And, um, you know, uh, again, there are lots and lots of great songs that um, stay in that one, four, five harmony home, I've written several, and they're great. If you're not careful, they can start to st sound a little stale. Um, so we want to uh, mix things up for the listener, uh, generally. Uh, harmonically, we talked about a lot of ways to do that. That's why there were so many uh, talks on, on that section of the series. Uh, one would be going outside that home one, four, five quadrant of chords in the chord progression or using suspended chords, things like that. That's sort of a, I think of that as kind of a microscopic uh, musical level. Not that they don't have a huge effect, they certainly do on the feel and the sound of it. Um, but that's getting kind of down there in the nitty gritty of the chords, you know. Uh, and let me parenthetically uh, repeat here that, again, tons of great songs have been written that are as simple as they can be. Um, I kind of think of these as a, a class of songs in themselves. Probably my best example uh, of that is Peace of Mind, and you can see uh, a link to the video in the pinned comment below which not only has a stay-at-home harmony, but a really simple rhythm and melody and structure consisting in just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. There are definitely times when such simplicity is exactly what a song wants, okay? And there are tons of examples out there of those things. So anyway, coming back to the bridge, including a bridge is a way to offer the listener's ear some kind of a macroscopic surprise, not that microscopic changing a little note in the chord here and there, but, but sort of an overall surprise um, or change, shake things up. Uh, first of all, pretty much by definition, the harmony and melody of a bridge are going to be different from the verse and chorus harmony and melodies. Maybe the rhythm too. But one thing I think a bridge can do with really great power is to offer something lyrically that the verses and chorus don't. Maybe it's a different perspective or a voice, okay? If you're having, say, a character speak in the other parts, maybe you have a different character or uh, a, a, a narrator or something. Maybe it's a clarification if your verses have been a little obscure, as mine sometimes are. Okay, uh, Paul Simon taught me this in, in his songs. Uh, he often will, uh, sometimes with a last verse, but sometimes in a bridge, kind of uh, just say, state the message of the song really directly, without metaphor, without imagery, without any other kind of uh, thinking things or poetic devices. He'll just say in his plain language as, it's possible to say what's going on, okay? It can be, that kind of shift can be really inviting, I think. Um, 
maybe it's a shift in the feel of, of the song. Um, check out my song Rain Shade, which in the bridge changes the harmony, tempo, even the meter of the bridge is different. I change into 6-8 uh, time from 4-4. Four, four. Uh, so everything changes. It's a great opportunity to offer something in words uh, and the pattern of your verses and, and, and the chorus. Um, uh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's an opportunity to offer something in both the words and music that the pattern of your uh, verses and choruses might not uh, be suited to. Okay, so bridges offer the possibility of a musical shift too. The most obvious of these is modulation. We haven't talked about that. It's just, a, that just is a fancy word for changing the key of the, of the song. Uh, and the bridge um, is really far and away the most common place to change the key. Um, among my songs, my favorite example of this is um, my song Fear and Greed. Again, the link is below. And here I use an instrumental bridge, which I do pretty often. It also offers the ear something inherently different because you're getting away from the singing um, and uh, it, it lets the listener tune in in a different way. Um, so in the instrumental bridge, I modulate from the key, in this case, of D major to G major. I won't go into the technicalities of this modulation, because as I've said over and over during this series, I never think about such things while I'm writing, okay? I was fooling around and I found something that I kind of liked the sound of, and I just followed where that went, okay? And I shut down the pathways where I didn't want it to go and it ended up where it did. Now, I can go ahead and analyze the heck out of that modulation sort of in a technical way, and it's kind of interesting to do that, and one of the fun things for me about doing this whole series is to look at my songs in particular and also other people's songs and kind of um, tease apart some of the technical things that are going on, but I really want to emphasize none of that goes on in my head when I'm writing it. Okay, I kind of realize afterwards that, oh yeah, it's kind of modulated and uh, here's how it did it through these kind of pivot chords and all that kind of thing. It's interesting if you're a, a, a music nerd, but the key thing is to fool around and um, uh, see where both the song and your m mind want to go. So again, I just explore and play and follow what sounds good. Uh, this bridge in Fear and Greed was pure exploration, and it shifted the feel of the song from something uh, that was kind of darker to something that was full of light. And I can't tell you how happy it made me to find this. Uh, it's really, that's when songwriting is really a joy. There's a lot more that can be said about bridges. Um, but I don't want to dwell on it here too much. My advice is first, as you're playing the song in with your verses and chorus, pay attention to whether it feels like it needs something else. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Uh, I know this sounds vague, but with only a couple of exceptions in 111 songs I've written so far, it's been pretty easy and clear to decide whether a song uh, wants a bridge or not. I, I can't even think of, maybe there was one or two times where I really kind of wrestled with the idea of whether to have a bridge or not. Um, overwhelmingly, whether the song wants one or not is something that, that comes quickly and clearly. If you decide that it would be a good idea to include a bridge, my suggestion is, uh, Take a little break here and there from playing in the song, the, courses, uh, the verses and chorus that you have, and go back to the fooling around stage. I mean, while, you know, while you're playing it in, just break away from that and start just fooling around again. Don't worry even about being in the same key or a different key or, uh, or, or anything else. Something about the 
feel of the rest of your song that you've already established is going to be with you and is going to uh, settle into whatever you're fiddling around with as you play. Okay, See what emerges and how the new bridge music, namely a chord progression at this point, and the verse and the chorus music you already have inform what you want to bring to the bridge to say or, or feel. And one thing it wouldn't hurt to keep in mind is that the bridge is, again, largely about kind of freshening uh, up your song. Okay. Now, where do you stick this new bridge of yours? For me, again, it's usually pretty clear where it goes especially if there's a lyric to it. In that case, of course, it has to fit in with the flow of the other lyrics, right? One pretty hard rule, and again, I, I really hesitate to give you any rules, okay? There aren't any, but I think what you'll find overwhelmingly is that the bridge probably doesn't want to come too early in the song. You want to kind of establish the song before shifting it into something else. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, for me, there tend to be two most common places, although there are exceptions to, to putting the bridge. And I think this is also the case for most other songs. Either before the last verse, which is normally followed by one or more choruses to end, or before the last chorus, or between the last two choruses, if you're ending with a couple of choruses. So listen to examples from my songs. Uh, in the first case, where it's before the last verse, uh, some examples, and again, the links are below, are uh, include Dark Dawn, More Ways, Old Car, Rain Shade, Turn On The Light, and Tumble and Run. Okay, that's a pretty common place before the last verse. And then, you know, what that does is it makes the last verse kind of a reprise. And um, you sort of shift back and it, there's a, uh, almost a, can be kind of a relaxation effect for the listener, uh, sort of a starting over with a new, um, with your having said what you had to say, both musically and lyrically beforehand. And now, that last verse can kind of um, uh, strike the listener uh, in a different way. Okay. Examples where it comes just before the ending chorus, so after the last verse, before the ending chorus, or sometimes, and for me, I think of it as almost the same way, between, it, often I'll end with two choruses in a row. That's pretty common too. And sometimes it works to put the bridge between those last two choruses, okay? And examples of this, either before the last two or between the last two choruses, include, among my songs, Human Highway, Rosalind, Make It Yours, um, uh, where it ends, by the way, with a sung uh, uh, bridge and then a chorus followed by an instrumental bridge and then a chorus, okay? And the instrumental bridge has a different chord progression than the sung bridge, so there are actually two, two bridges. Um, uh, drain is another one which again has an in instrumental bridge between the two ending choruses. There are other variations, um, and uh, I don't want to inhibit any of that. Music is infinite and good for you for exploring. Um, and, you know, a lot of my songs just didn't want a bridge. Ask the song is probably the main lesson for today. There are other issues of structure to think about, such as the introduction and ending or an outro. Also, one structural thing that I've seen that's often neglected or not really thought through by songwriters is how the different pieces are connected to one another verse to chorus, chorus to verse, bridge to chorus, etc. You know, are the, do, do you need to have any transitional chords in there or uh, two measures or something like that, okay? These transitions are, uh, are really important um, and should be definite and, and, and precise, okay? 
Um, one thing that happens for me is, you know, I, I talked about how my um, the chord progression tends to get established pretty quickly, but suppose I have a chord progression for a verse, and then, you know, I'm kind of working uh, on that. Maybe I even write some lyrics for, for the verse before I ever get into the music for a chorus. Um, and then, and then maybe I have a chorus somewhere, but I need to figure out how to transition those two. That, that's one place where I, um, where it's not uncommon for me to make a little tweak at the end of the verse to more smoothly or whatever it's called, is called for transition from that verse to the chorus. So that's a case where I, I do go back and modify my chord progression. Okay. Um, so pay attention to those, uh, transitions. Again, they should be definite. Okay. They, they don't, don't think of them in a casual way. They're really important. Otherwise your song won't really be very well defined. It doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't change how you play them at any given time, but just make sure that you're making these transitions intentionally and that you've played through them again and again. Well, I think I better stop there. Uh, please listen to the examples uh, provided in the pinned comment below. Uh, I hope this has given you some ideas for bridges and for organizing the structure of your song. The key message I'd send you off with is that while you're playing, while you're in the playing in stage, remember Jackson Brown, listen to what the song is asking for as you consider uh, any last edition changes. Your song will thank you. I'd appreciate any comments on this video, on all the other videos, and on my songs, and please subscribe to, uh, to my channel. Until next time, stay in tune.